He has a body of work that any director would be envious of. He has an Oscar. He has a new film. It is called Sabrina. I am pleased to have director Sidney Pollack back on this program. Welcome back. Good to be back. Uh, just a couple out of Africa, Best Picture, Best Director, and nominated for Tutsi and also for They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Yeah, yeah. that's a long time ago. <laughs> I was talking to Greg Kinnear here in our interview that uh, has not... <laughs> he's funny, isn't he? Yeah. Now, but I, will, I will talk about him later, but yeah. let's first talk about this film. Why did Sidney Pollack, with that, it, when you go to your office, there's that long corridor, because you and I did an interview for another right. program recently, and it, you've got all these pictures and all these, um, what do they call them? Posters, oh, they're one sheets. All these movies film. that you've done. You know, why this one? Not that you shouldn't do it, but it's a remake of yeah. uh, William. Uh, <laughs> Billy Wilder. Billy Wilder. Well, I thought the same way in the beginning. I, I, you know, I really didn't want to do a remake, and I sure didn't want to do one of Billy Wilder. Yeah. He's <laughs> it's, it's a, a formidable it's guy. A tough club, I, I wouldn't try to, you know, improve on that. But um, they were persistent. I kept saying no, and they were persistent. And then I tell you what really happened was uh, Harrison called, and. I am uh, just a huge fan of his, and I'm particularly a fan when he does something like Witness. When I remembered him in okay. the non-action movies. I love him in the action movies, mm -hmm. but uh, he doesn't very often get a chance to do a real love story. I like to do love stories, and they're tough to do, and they're tough to cast, and, uh, and so I thought, well, I wish I could figure out a way to make this work. And what happened is, as I started to think about it, and I started to kind of define for myself why I didn't want to make it, I, I got sort of hooked on what I kept telling myself, which was, I kept sort of saying, I don't know how you can combine the romantic sensibilities of the 50s, sort of innocent romantic sensibility of the 50s, with the cynical realism of the 90s. And I started talking to Harrison about that, and I said, gee, I, don't, I don't really don't think they're going to mess with it. wanted to do it. Well, he wanted to do the picture. If you would do it. Well, he, he said that, and he, he, he was trying to push me into doing it. We only really had one long conversation on the phone. And uh, as I kept talking about this unlikely combination, I got, I got sort of hooked on the challenge of it. I thought, geez, it'd be kind of interesting if you could get a real romantic fairy tale, the kind of movie I can remember going to where you... You'd go in and you'd just get lost for a couple of hours in another world, a world that wasn't your... I used to always be surprised that it was daylight when I came outside. And said, Geez, how did it get to be daylight? Yeah, because you know? this is a whole different place. Yeah, and, and uh, we don't make a lot of those kind of movies now. It's a more cynical time now. We want to make movies that are closer to what we feel is our reality and the world we live in all the time. So I thought I would try this and see if I couldn't combine it with some of that toughness. And that, a lot of that came from Harrison because... We, we tried to update and change that character into a real 90s tycoon, you know, the kind of guys that buy and sell companies for breakfast. And uh, there are a lot of them, and we know them. And, uh, and I thought he was an interesting character. I mean, if, if there hadn't been an original Sabrina, I would have probably called this Linus and Sabrina, because that character is as important in this film as as Sabrina is. It's, he's much more important than uh, Linus was in uh, Billy Wilder's original. It was more of a real ensemble yeah. piece. Harrison Ford. Well, he's extraordinary. I mean, he's um, he is the, one of the easiest guys to work with. Uh, I mean, I had a really great time with him. He's really smart and simple a lot of common sense and very, very decent guy and is, is, doesn't require any handling uh, or any special stroking. Yeah. Or, you oh, you know. mean there's some out there that do? Well, sometimes, you know, but uh, <laughs> no, he's just, he's just up front and who he is and what he is and he, he's comfortable in his skin in a way that very few people I know are. And he's not fooled by his station in the business. I mean, he's He's confident of it, but he doesn't turn it into something that it isn't. Define his station in the business. Well, I think he's absolutely one of, if not, I mean, some people say the biggest box, biggest office, box star. office star. I mean, Probably his in, movies have made more money than anybody's movies alive I think somebody today. said he's been in a 
I'm not sure I got these numbers right, but I know I'm, I'm not exaggerating. He's been in seven of the top 20 box office films of all time, four, four of the top 10. Four of the top 10, seven of the top 20. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Uh, what is the connection, you think? I mean, obviously, those were some of Steven Spielberg and other oh, films yeah. made by great directors and yes, a lot of appeal. Lucas, but he uh, also has something that's. Yeah, he does. Is, Probably uh, what you just described. Well, kind men of... and women like him. He's not, he's, 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 you know, I watch when we walk around and we, we go out of the country and come back. The customs guys want to get autographs. Yeah. The cops want to get autographs. You know, the cabbies want to get autographs. He doesn't intimidate them and there's a warmth that they feel about Yeah, him. and he, I, I'm not sure I can articulate precisely what it is. Uh, he's one of the guys that doesn't seem to be divorced from the rest of us but he's still a movie star. It's a very hard thing yeah. to have. He, he lives away from Los Angeles, doesn't he? lives in Montana, Wyoming. somewhere in Wyoming. Jackson Wyoming. Hole. Yeah. yeah, we live in Jackson Hole. Yeah, has for a long time. Yeah. And is a, I guess everybody knows, he's a carpenter and a terrific carpenter. Really was a great carpenter. Yeah. Built his own house out there as a Well, he built a lot of it. And, and stuff uh, like that. Joan Didion and John Dunn, the writers, uh, used to have a house at the beach in Malibu, and he did built their staircase, a lot of their cabinet work, and they, they always say uh, he was the best carpenter they ever had. Is that right? So if it doesn't work out, it'll be... Oh, yeah, he's, he's always got that to fall back on. Yeah. How that's about great. Greg Kinnear? Why did you choose him? Well, so you I, called him up. He didn't call you. Right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, I couldn't find... I mean, you know, it's one of those things. You Necessity is the mother of, and you know the and rest. And you were looking for what? Well, I was looking for somebody who could be Harrison's brother, younger brother, somebody who could behave in the most uh, ridiculous way and you would forgive him. I mean, he had to have a kind of, uh, a kind of guilelessness, if you will, you know, because this is a guy who hits on every girl and he's engaged to one girl, he's hitting on 12 others. He doesn't even know what day it is. He spends the family money like it's going out of style. He doesn't ever go to work. And uh, so there it had to be somebody who was kind of boyish in a way that you'd forgive. And... Uh, I just, I couldn't come up with anybody other than Cruz. I mean, I kept thinking about Tom Cruise. I just made a film with him, and I, and I, and I... This was the firm? Yeah, exactly, and, and I, we talked about it, but it, it really wasn't a, a big enough part. He was getting ready to do Mission Impossible, and um, I was, I just couldn't find anybody. So I started looking everywhere. I started looking on television. I started looking on talk shows. I started looking for talk show yeah. hosts. I, really, literally. Yeah. Right. I mean, I looked at uh, situation comedy people. I looked yeah. at everybody. And uh, you, did you call up? I mean, who Billy Hopkins? Well, who did this? Who, who was your casting agent? Well, we no, we had it David Rubin. Because he did was, Oliver, I mean, yeah. Oliver Stone's film. Yeah, basically. David Rubin was my casting. And you guy, went to him but, and said, "Tell me what you've got." And he came no, back with no idea. No, 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 no. It actually came from a, a woman who who runs my company. Uh, I have a company called Mirage. Right. And Lindsay Duran. We were going down lists, and we were yeah. talking about everybody. Uh, you know, including you. I mean, you know, it was literally who, who <laughs> you were really way down there, weren't you? No, no. I mean, we were saying what what yeah. is a uh, where is an area that we haven't thought of? Who's yeah. on television? Who's yeah. doing talk shows? Who's doing situation comedies? Who's in a series that hasn't broken out yeah. yet? Who could we get that's you know a, a fresh face? Right. And and looking at everybody, Greg's name came up and. Uh, I saw really just one of those talk soup things that he was doing at that time. And I had him come in. And I thought he had the charm, and he had, a, he had the right look for it. Yeah. Uh, he had never acted before. And uh, so I just read with him, just easy, just kind of, you know, tried to get him not, not to act or not to do too much. And I liked, he had a kind of easy naturalism, I guess you would say, and so I taped him with my little high eight. Yeah, right. we, we, we know that, yeah. And, uh, and then I worked with him for a week, yeah. a couple hours every day, one scene at a time. Teaching him timing, teaching him No, what? no, no, what no. What do you just, teach well, in a week? You, well, I, I don't say I really taught him anything. What I tried to do... He says you did. Well, what I tried to do is, 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 is get him to listen, which is the real key to almost all acting, and it sounds much simpler than it is. But, but good actors always begin by, by getting their attention off what they're doing and on to the other guy, and that means listening. 
That's the first thing. And, uh, and I bet it also means that the naturalness takes over. Whatever natural juices they are begin to come out so that, so that you know, all the tension that builds up. If you're listening, you're focusing on what the other person's saying. Exactly right. So all of your instincts are not like this. They're yeah, like exactly, this. exactly right. I mean, is it, in some way, I'm controlling your behavior right, right, right now, right. making you say right, yes. without having to think of it. Yes, you smiled. But I, you didn't think about smiling. Exactly. I made you smile because we're connected and so. And, and the same thing, yeah. that, that idea, for starters. And then other than that, to try to understand that it's um, not anything different than what he does every moment of every day, that it's, you know, it's Living just, and breathing? Yeah, and talking and listening and uh, asking a question, accusing somebody of something or whatever, Br try to break it down into little strokes like that. And I thought he did amazingly well. I mean, he picked it up. Um, I felt he was directable. And then I taped those individual scenes that we worked on each one of those days. Um, and then I just, uh, at some point, you just take a chance. The whole picture was a gamble anyway. So, so what the hell, I might as well gamble all the way. As we tape this, it is Friday afternoon. Very tough Friday afternoon. Tell me about it. Well, it's opening day for, yeah. you know, another expensive... 50 million bucks 50 million on dollars. the line. Yeah, which Big is becoming... Big star, yes. Harrison Ford. Yes. And, Big director, and in, a, and in a crowded marketplace where if you open the New York Times today and look at the ads heat. for the pictures... Well, you got Heat, Jumanji, Nixon. Nixon. Jumanji. Nixon. Uh, our picture, you got, you have, you have all the big holdovers. You have American President yeah. and Casino, and you have the uh, Toy Story. You have uh, the Money Train. You have uh, Othello's opening. You know, in New York, yeah. that's a big. Uh, it's a huge, huge mark. And I, you just I don't want, know. you want desperately is just to get a sampling. You want people to say, Harrison Ford, Sabrina remake, Sidney Pollack, Hugh Norman. Let's take a chance. Let's go watch it. Yeah, you want, I just want to get Those that in. don't read Janet Maslin's <laughs> review in the New York Times. <laughs> well, she gave it a, a good yeah, review. Yeah. So we've got a lot of good reviews on the television. You know, we got very good Is that any indication for you? Well, no, it just means that it reaches a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people watch those network reviewers. You know, yeah. they'll, they watch... Uh, Cisco and Eber and all those Yeah, ones. those guys gave us two thumbs up and... Shallot was great today, and Joel Siegel was great, and though all those reviews were good. Have you ever made a film in which all those were good, and all was all thumbs up and good, and ought to see, and then the box office didn't respond? I made the, the best reviewed film I ever made in my life didn't make any money. What was that? Oh, that called they shoot horses, don't they? And I won all kinds of and prizes. Did Jane Fonda win an award, or no? She was nominated. nominated we had right. eleven Academy Award yeah. nominations. We didn't got, make any money. No. But it was just too downbeat yeah. at the time. I mean, it's being re redone now on a laser disc because it's a 25-year-old film Gig, now. Gig, uh, Gig Young Gig won Young. an Oscar for it. He won, and Jane was nominated. I was nominated. It was nominated for Best Picture. It was nominated for Best Score. It was nominated for Costumes, yeah. for Editing. And, and you know, and no, it what didn't cost hardly any yeah. money, but nobody went to see it. And it, it got as good a reviews as I've ever had on any film but but they do they do count for something i mean they don't they won't stop a picture that audiences really like and they won't make you go to a picture that audiences don't want to go to that's happened a lot but uh, but they are important this clip is do i look stupid set it up for me do i look stupid is uh well this irresponsible mr kinnear as yes, i told you is about to be and married. And he plays the role that William Holden That's played right. in the original. All right. Totally irresponsible guy, never goes to work, is, is, is the younger brother of, of, of a family that's worth billions, uh, and is about to be married to a young woman which will help make a billion-dollar merger possible between these two families. But suddenly his fancy has been taken by, by the chauffeur's daughter, Julie. who has returned home, Julia, Julia Ormond. Ormond. Right. Now, this is a terrible thing for the mother. It's a terrible thing for the brother. It's a terrible Lawrence. thing for the business. It's a terrible thing for the business. All right. Roll tape. Sabrina. Uh, Nancy Marshall is great, isn't she? She's wonderful. She's just yeah. wonderful. And, a, and a really, a, this role is sort of takes over all of the comedy that was carried in the in the original movie by both the mother and the father. There was a great comic father there, and and I felt, rightly or wrongly, or uh, we felt, or all of us that, you know, worked on the script felt that it would be a little more contemporary 
to have the mother running the business yeah. in the 90s. Three questions. One is directing and acting. You seem to be doing more acting lately. Well, I, that's not True. my choice. I just, I mean, it, what happened honestly was I got, I think I may have talked to you about this on an earlier show years ago, but I got really talked and pushed I into know. doing right. it with, for, with Dustin on Tootsie. Know, that right. was his idea. He's got to take the blame or the credit. I mean, he really forced me to do it. Um, and because of that, I started to occasionally get some acting offers. And then when Woody Allen sent me that script, it was such a delightful script. I mean, it was a wonderful script of husbands and wives. Um, that was the, the 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 biggest part that I was ever offered in a you know in a in a film. And I I wanted to do it because I like his work so much. Yeah, you don't turn down Woody much. Yeah, and I and I. I really was curious to see how he worked, and I thought it would, it would be interesting. I don't like doing it when I'm directing. I hated it on Tootsie. It's really hard. I don't mm -hmm. know how guys do it. But then the other things really, honestly, have just been favors for people. I mean, Altman uh, got stuck one night on, you know, on the player. He was supposed to have Blake Edwards playing this lawyer, and he called, and he's an old friend, and he said, help me out, and uh, I went down for one day. It wasn't much of a part. You love it. You I don't. love doing it. You love getting out there. You I, started out as an actor. Yeah, it's fun. Charlie, I mean, when if they I call loved you, it, I'd be doing it all the time. I'd get a lot of offers. Do you really? Oh, yeah. I mean, not, they, not the, great parts necessarily, but, but, but... interesting parts. Well, sometimes they're more interesting than and others. And you turn them down. I, well, I, I don't have a lot of time to do it, yeah. number one, and number two... I, I'm given all. I really have given acting up in a way and gotten myself. Yeah, but into see, I thought you'd sort of come thing. around to a point where you're enjoying it again. I mean, you'd prove yourself as a director. You know, you can direct whenever you want to. I They're enjoyed. They're always calling uh, you, and you're saying, "Hey, I'll just have some fun acting." I enjoyed doing uh, uh, Husbands and Wives because yeah. it was a real role. Uh, if I got offered a role like that that was really interesting, I would do it. I would do it if I had the time. But you know, directing is a weird job. It, it, as you know, it's I'm I'm eight months sometimes in pre-productions, and I can't take a month out of that or two months yeah. out of that. It's really hard. I mean, I was really lucky when the Woody Allen thing came up yeah. that I could take the time. You know, what I don't know, we've talked about this at length, and I'm not going to sort of re go over to replow old ground. But I don't understand why you're anxious anymore. Why you still. Well, I think if you get over being anxious, you're dead in really? this business. Well, I mean, you're always anxious. Is a, you're always concerned that people will like the work you do. You, you, you can't help it. I mean, part of the reason you do it, you do it first for yourself because it's the only measure you can take of it. And then it's a, something that you've made to be put out there for people to watch. Now, if all those people look at it and they go, oh, he's lost it. That's got to... That's got to bother you. So you are nervous, I mean, about it. I mean, I don't mean that you're sitting there biting your nails. You do get used to it, but but it, you can't not care about it. And and opening weekends, which which are what we're going through right now, are, are always yeah. sort of uh, anxiety provoking. Harvey Weinstein of Miramax once told me that by the 12, 1, 2 o'clock on Friday night when the movies open here in New York, generally, right. he'll know what it's going to look like, and he'll have a real good indication as to whether he's got a hit on his hands. Oftentimes that's true. It's not always true. Yeah. There the are movies, yes, there are films, well, you know, the famous one was Arthur, uh, yeah, which sure. was, you know, that's almost a historical movie for that reason, yeah. is that it didn't open strong and it went on to do a lot. Um, there are all kinds of films that's, that, that sort of open moderately but hang in. Word of mouth. Hang in, hang in, hang in. Yes, they'll do a million dollars a week for a, as many weeks as you want them to do it. Yeah. And there's not, not great money, but it, 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 it mounts up. It's very hard in today's marketplace to do that because terms are different. What happens is the longer you run a picture, the less money you're getting in terms of the split with the theater owners. Yeah. So today, there's a lot of hype and a lot of marketing. That's why you just sort of bludgeoned to death with and, ads because the they want the first week to do it. Yeah, And are they anxious to get it on cassette too because they get such a return? They get more return today from the video cassette sales than they do from the box office sales. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's not, not the majority of the time? 
I'm not the expert on that, but I wouldn't say it's the yeah. majority. You think it's box time. office more than video? Well, processes. it's a combination, but yeah. it, it uh, if you take a picture You're like... Maybe I'm thinking of foreign sales. Yeah, foreign sales can be huge. I mean, I... No, maybe I'm thinking, but, oh, well, I don't know what I'm thinking. You can, you, it's all different. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you can take the breakdown of a picture that uh, might be something like a really big hit might be $150 million of box office in the United States, and uh, let's say $100 million of box office... Uh, foreign, and then thirty-five million dollars in television and mm -hmm. cable sales, and then thirty million dollars in video sure. cassettes, and, then and then another twenty-five foreign video cassettes. Yeah. Let's say. I mean, I've had pictures that have done that, and it's not it's not uncommon for a hit movie to do those kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. Great to have you here, Sidney Pollock. The film is called Sabrina, starring Harrison Ford and Greg Kinnear and Julia Ormond. Julia Ormond, wonderful. A very attractive lady as sure. well. Great to see you, my friend. You too. We'll be back. Stay with us.